friends so I am back at it the sacred places in Tony Foster's uh, exhibition and uh, let's start okay so this is the exhibition of uh, sacred places and uh, Tony Foster has uh, a particular interest in Southwest America, at least in this kind of painting. And uh, here are the stories of his painting. And this place, uh, the, 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 <clears throat> the location is a four corner region where Arizona, uh, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah meet. And uh, this was uh, the original place, or origin place, the starting place of uh, a lot of American tribes, uh, American um, indigenous American tribes, and also the Mormon Catholic started to, uh, there in the 19th century, find some spiritual root and the new age of, uh, of spirituality in Sedona area also um, find their inspiration from here. So you can see these red dots are the, the places Tony planned to visit. He may not finish every place as a painting, but this is what he had planned. And uh, these are the landscapes he has seen. And uh, last night, I think I have painted, uh, I have copied one of these paintings. And this uh, a huge tower we can find somewhere there. And uh, this is uh, his painting. And uh, when he did this painting, there are some stories about it. When he did painting, the weather is so, so, so cold, minus 30 degrees. So the, the watercolor, because he used the watercolor and only um, very small watercolor, small palette. And uh, because it's uh, so cold, the water is frozen, so he has to use gin, gin tonic, <laughs> gin and water to combine together so that it can be used. And uh, I am just fascinated not only by, by everything actually. Let's uh, take a look at the, at the cloud. Wow. Maybe tonight we will try cloud. So there are some kind of turquoise blue and a little bit of yellow, pink. And uh, I am thinking the technique. You put everywhere with water and then a very, very light scrape of light, uh, light blue light turquoise, a very, very, very light pink, yellow, and then some um, other blues, uh, royal blue, navy blue, marine blue, sapphire blue, and uh, look at uh, the trees. I think he, let me take out my glasses, I think he painted, uh, he painted, uh, he, he drew the pencil outline first, but actually these mountains does not feel as a pencil outline. Mm. So the weight of 
the painting, you have a lot of big blue sky, and the, the sky color is um, is this very a uh, very light rainbow color, but majority of this painting is taking the sky so it looks very open but it does not feel bore boring because there are different colors in it and another thing when you do painting you can see that you try not to put a line right in the middle put something below the middle or up the middle you do not want to make your painting too symmetric you see this painting, the sky is taking much larger space, but you do not feel unbalanced because the sky is light, the weight is light, and the mountain, the weight of the mountain is heavy, and the color of the mountain is heavy, but it's not only mountain, so there are some light green colors to, to, to bring it up. So the weight is balanced. It's uh, you feel it's far and uh, broad. Wonderful. So some of his exercise on the side. This is uh, this is better than, than using a tape, huh? and it looks very natural and organic. I love it. Every time you learn something and you can see the edge comes out. Oh, this is a, this is a, a rain. So you dot some of, uh, of the cloud and stop and put another layer and then use your brush to do some uh, uh, some darker color and then a dry brush to clean it up. Sorry, I must have too much noise in my sound. And let's take and I just uh, went to their um, their shop. They actually sell these books. And uh, I think it's twenty dollar, and um, that's a quite sick a book. It's a, a very very good thing if you. Sorry, it's a very very good. It's a very very, um, very very good thing to keep if you want. Oh, look at this cloud. Forced in silence, monastery of Christ in the desert. Where is the monastery? Maybe that is the monastery. Christ in the desert monastery, looking north at the real Shama. Shama. That must be the monastery. A person's journey becomes a journey that uh, inspires us all. And it makes you want to just sit down and do a painting 
and uh, and show respect to nature, to a tree, to a piece of rock. And this place must have soul. This white grass is smart. So this is actually quite an interesting story. So in order to do these paintings, Tony Foster lived, uh, had a residence a place, uh, had his residence in a monarch monastery. And in this monastery, in this monastery, uh, the monks practice no talking. So he lived there for 10 days and uh, he was just quiet, did not talk and did his painting and, um, and uh, practiced some chanting. And at the very last day, one of the monks got permission to talk, so talked with him and told him that uh, they had Googled, <laughs> Googled his name and uh, found his painting and they were very proud to be his hosts. Oh, that's such an interesting story. And uh, yeah, stories like this makes our life interesting, makes our makes our our painting has more meaning. So this section is about maintaining memories. So he stayed in this place for 10 days and he was very much in, inspired by the petroglyph. Is that petroglyph? Yes, petroglyphs. And he made his own, his own interpretation of his own petroglyph with uh, with pieces of watercolor paper and uh, his uh, artistic crayon. That's very interesting. Look at the mountain. And each mountain is different. And you see this painting, you can kind of, kind of guess the, the the volcanic or the underground movement of this piece of land layer after layer and uh, layer broken broken out by water become canyon and uh, and under earth rocks wow every time i see this layered mountain i was just so so uh, mesmerized, so so amazed. This must be such an old rock, old land. It has souls. New land, old land, all have souls. But it's just so interesting to see these mountains witnessed nature for so many years and still standing strong. To this painting. Look at the water reflection. And the water, actually, he didn't paint it completely blue. Layer after layer, layer after layer. And this Wenzi uh, Cao. Wow. Oh, actually, this one, he didn't do a pencil sketch. It's a very, very rough pencil sketch 
and then he did uh, just uh, dots, 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 a lot of dots. Only one line here. So let's see this painting also. It's not right in the middle. It's uh, a little bit, uh, well, looks 3D. It's, um, it must be two pieces of paper. I need my glasses to see it. Is this two pieces of paper? It looks like. It might be two pieces of paper combined together. Let me check. Yes, this is two pieces of paper combined together. Very interesting. And it's actually a very, very good con. Uh, continuity and you feel that they are from uh, you feel that uh, they are uh, there is a uh, uh, 3d oh even these trees I am thinking this painting must be finish the tree and finish the island and then another painting on the background for the for the for the later part. Whatever it is, it's just a, a fantastic work. Yes. I'm proud of my detailed study. Look at the grass. You have to test each color, combine the color and test the color. And his painting is very, very watery. This is why he, he can use a small palette and, uh, and paint all this. It's mostly very transparent and trans, uh, transparent. Wow. This birch tree. Wow. Don't you want to paint these trees? I do. The leaves. Gosh, how can you do the layers of it? Wow. Look at the cloud. This painting has a story. The story is called Facing Mortality. And there are times there are danger, which is greater than bad weather. We know bad weather, we know coldness. And there was one time when he did this painting and he suddenly heard a bullet shooting. And then he felt acute. Let me read it, read it. He heard the distinctive sound of bullets whizzing past his skull and suddenly felt acutely aware of his mortality and isolated situation. Wow. Rather than leaving the scene in panic, however, Foster continued with his work without further incident, reasoning that the shooter could have killed him. 
if she or he had wanted to. Foster commemorated the incident by punching three small bullet-sized holes in the collar. one person in the isolated place. You may face a lot of danger, a lot of things that you cannot expect. So this is uh, finding the unexpected monument valley. So uh, for many people, including Tony Foster, knowing or getting acquainted, get to know monument valley is from Western movies. And uh, Tony wanted to uh, paint the valley that is different from the film because uh, almost every angle you have seen already. So he, he was planning to paint something that is large, that can see in a bigger scale that the movie has never seen. And in his 10-day traveling, he finally found a location. He climbed a big mountain and found this view and this view. So the view from this place, you see the Monument Valley in a much larger scale and in a much more, much grandeur view that is different from just the drive backdrop of movie. Wow. Imagine you are there and the whole world is in front of you. It must be raining. Wow. That is the magic of watercolor. If you are nearby, come here to Palo Alto and see it. And these are all originals. Okay, you have a, a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. I love you, I really do. Do, 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 do.